Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I want to show you how you can take a simple men's undershirt and turn it into something really pretty for yourself. We're going to turn the men's undershirt into a laced edged camisole, which will be really pretty. It's a fun project and you get some good skills with working with lace and different elastics. So I have the men's undershirt. I have about a yard or a meter of stretch lace and I probably won't use this whole section. Probably could get away with about a quarter of a yard really because we'll use a little bit of that. Half a yard of skinnier lingerie elastic and about a yard or a meter of bra strap elastic. This is a really kind of a pretty one. It's a bit shinier down the middle so that's kind of pretty. So that's for the straps. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I really like these friction pens. These are just awesome because you can write on fabric and then it just irons right off. Sometimes I find it's still hard to see the lines that I'm drawing, especially on videos. So friction now makes markers. So I think that's going to be really nice. So fun toy to play around with. The only other thing you're going to need is a ruler. I love my see-through ruler, but you can use any kind of ruler for this one. No problem. That's all we need to get started. So let's jump right in. I'm going to take the undershirt and fold it in half sideways, bringing the two side seams together. Because we're making a symmetrical garment out of a symmetrical garment, I want it folded in half. So I'm bringing the side seam together here. The seams are quite twisted though because it's been worn and washed a few times. Um, and so there, the seams are quite far apart, but this is the point that matters to me. I want that part neatly together everything else smooth so this is the side seam center front down here center back up there and i want to make a line i want to draw a line straight across perpendicular to this seam but because this seam is so twisted i'm going to measure from the bottom and it's 13 and a half inches so i'll mark there 13 and a half now if you don't have the friction erasable pen I would do this on the inside then using even a sharp pencil will do because that you know a sharp pencil pencil marks will wash off it's not a big problem but do it on the inside just just to be sure that you don't have a, a line that remains okay so that line straight across and now in the center here on the front this is about eight inches wide so at about the four inch mark I'm gonna come up two inches. Good. And I'm gonna draw straight down to the center front. And then I'm gonna make a nice curve to that side seam. That's it. Good. And that's it. So now I'm gonna cut on that line. So there's our camisole shape already, but you want to see how that friction pen erases so nice? Look. So now with the hot iron, just watch the magic here. Can you see that? That is so awesome. I love that. Okay, so just like that, there's our camisole shape. We're not going to be changing the size of this at all. Uh, so make sure you're starting with an undershirt that fits you. If you do want to change the size, if you want to take it in at all, you'd have to do it now before we apply the lace. Okay, but if you're ready to go, I'm just going to fold it in half again with that side seam going down the middle. I'm just going to be applying the skinny lingerie elastic first, just from the point of the front around the back and to the other point. So I'm doing, I'm going to put this skinny elastic around everywhere except for that center front bit. Yes, I think with this elastic, I will go right sides together. And then when I turn it, just the, the little edge will show. I think that's really cute. Um, but with some of them, if the bottom edge is pretty as well, you can just put it right on top and zigzag it on top. So you can decide based on your elastic, if you wanna just overlap it on the top edge or like what I'm gonna do right sides together. I'm gonna to straight stitch it on with the elastic stretched out a little bit, just gently. Then I'll flip it down like that. And then I'll do the three step zigzag there just to hold the seam allowances down. I definitely don't want this to flip down. 
afterwards. Okay, let's take it to the machine. I'm going to use a ballpoint needle. It is better on a t-shirt knit where you're not risking putting little holes in your in your knit that are going to run after a few washings. Good. So I've got the I've got the camisole right side out and I'm starting at the left side of the front. I want to put my elastic right side down. There is one side that's nicer than the other side. So I'll put it right side down or onto the camisole. I'm starting right at that corner. And I'm just going to be aiming to sew just at the top of the regular elastic part and leaving this lacy edge free. So I don't have to stretch it yet. I'm just going to get my back tack in there. When you're starting at a point, sometimes the machine just does not have enough fabric to grab onto to move it along. So it'll do a bunch of stitches all in the same spot and then you end up with a tangle. So if that happens to you where it just doesn't want to move, just get your needle up, lift your presser foot up, give it a wiggle, and see if it'll go from there. Sometimes it helps to start in a bit, maybe half an inch in or so, and then go back to the beginning. So I'm gonna start in maybe half an inch and then back tack back to the beginning, just so I don't have that problem again. There we go, okay. Now I'm going to pick up the elastic and just gently stretch as I go, keeping the edge of my elastic running along the edge of the camisole and aiming to sew right there, right at the division between the regular elastic and the lacy edge. And so it's just a gentle stretch. And I can cut off the extra elastic. So it looks like I used about half a meter or half a yard. Good, and look how pretty that edge is. But I do wanna sew the seam allowance down and so that it's permanently up like that. I don't want this to be able to flip. So I'm gonna use the three step zigzag and I'm gonna try it at four and a half millimeters by two millimeters and see how I like that. Okay, and then starting at the same corner that I started before, I'm just folding the seam allowance down toward the body, away from that lacy edge, and working the good side up. And I think I'm going to try it with the edge of my presser foot actually running along the edge of the lace, just so my three-step zigzag comes up right to the edge of the fold there. Okay, so again, it's a little bit of a gentle stretch, really not much at all for this step. So after a couple inches, just check that you like the look of it. Can you see here a little bit? It looks really pretty. I'm happy with that. From peak around the back to peak is all trimmed with the lingerie elastic and that triple zigzag is doing a nice job to make sure that that always stands up and it just, it looks so pretty. So now, this is the exact same lace that I used in the video where we sewed up some pajamas. I'll put a link to that video right here, but this lace is really, it's, it's really fun to work with and pretty easy to work with. And what we do is the straighter edge is gonna be facing up, the more scallop edge is down, and we wanna create a symmetrical shape with it. But now see this, see where I bend it, it's gonna be lifting up there where it has to bend around. So I'm just gonna show you how to deal with that. I'm choosing the center of one scallop to be right in the middle. Can you see the pattern in the lace here? I'm gonna cut around that and just see if that gives me a good shape to work with. Oh, that's lovely. See how nice that's going to sit now? Awesome, I love that. So the straight edge is just laying right along the edge of the camisole. And I just want to make sure that I've got it so it's even here. And then these look symmetrical. Good. So the first thing I want to do is join these two pieces of lace together before I try to join them to the t-shirt or to the camisole. When we're joining lace, we don't just put right sides together and make a seam. 
Instead, we're going to just be zigzagging a line and then cutting away the extra on the two sides. See how this heavier bottom edge, that scalloped edge is sort of reinforced there. I want that edge to connect with the same edge underneath. Good, so I'm just gonna pin here. Good. And come up here. I've just got a couple pins, just lace to lace only. I'm not pinning it to the camisole yet. And I'll just take that to the machine, run a zigzag line down the middle, and then trim away the extra. Okay, so now I'm using just a regular zigzag, not the three-step zigzag, about two and a half millimeters by two and a half millimeters. So it's just this little line here, that's it right now. Now with small scissors, if you have them, you're just gonna cut off the extra on one side of that zigzag and off the other side of the zigzag. Just being careful not to cut the lace underneath. So now that lace piece, now that it's assembled, it goes back on top and again, center it nicely. So now I'm gonna put lots of pins all in a line pointing towards where I'm gonna be starting to sew, which is over here. And I'm gonna use that same zigzag stitch all along that scallop with lots of little turns and wiggles. I'm gonna be zigzagging following that scallop right along there from pin to pin. But I wanna have something solid at the end here because I'm gonna be obviously trimming away the excess lace on both ends and I don't really want to just have a raggedy lace end there. So I'm looking for a solid edge in the lace where I can taper the lace off because I don't want to just zigzag to here and then cut here because I'd have sort of a raggedy edge left. I want to be able to see in the pattern of the lace a more solid edge. So I'm going to be following the edge of the lace here. So I'm gonna come right up here and then follow the scallop from there. At this end, I think I'll come up inside the lace here to taper off at the point there. When you're using lace, you can kind of create your own shape if you follow the pattern of the lace. So I'll be tapering off there and here. Where I'm gonna start is where my two pieces of elastic basically overlap at the corner here. Don't take out your pins until the last second. I'm following the shapes that are in the lace until I reach that scallop. Lots of little pivots so that you follow that scallop really nice and closely. Okay, so here at this point now, I wanna kind of wiggle around with the lace to come right back up to this corner where my two kinds of elastic are overlapping at that corner. Beautiful. So if you think it's pretty now, wait until I trim away the knit fabric behind. So first I'm gonna trim away the excess lace on the front with my little scissors just coming up to the zigzag. Oh my gosh, that's so that's a pretty shape, hey? And then over here, same thing. Just be aware of what your lower blade of your scissors is doing, that you're not accidentally cutting anything you don't mean to cut. So now you trim away the excess t-shirt fabric. And again, just be careful that you're not cutting into that lace. It's really easy to make a little snip. Now, if I did accidentally make a little snip in this lace, you can kind of fake it back in just with a needle and white thread, just by hand. You can make some sort of open lacy stitches in there that kind of mimic the lace. It's so much fun working with lace. Like, 
you really have to try it. You want to trim quite closely because it just looks so much prettier when the lace doesn't have the fabric behind it. There, so all that gets cut off. And then what you have left is just gorgeous. All we need is straps and we're good to go. And I don't really use those adjusters too much. You don't really need to be able to adjust the strap if it's just you wearing this, right? You're, if you're selling these, you want your customer to be able to adjust it, then fine, you can use those little bra strap adjusters. But if it's just for you, you can just get it exactly right for yourself and you don't need those. I've cut my yard of bra strap elastic in half. This is the back folded in half and I'm just going to find a place about halfway along that here and on the other side matching that so that I know my straps are equally placed along the back. So I'll just slip my pin into the strap. Same with the other one. Just put that behind. I'm putting it down about half an inch, maybe even a little less. I'm just going to do a couple of, of back tacks, one kind of hidden at the top there and then one just about a quarter inch down. So I'm going to go to a straight stitch. So again, take your pin out at the last second, get yourself oriented first and I'm aiming to be on the strap, but just at the top of the knit. So I can go back and forth a few times there because my back tack is totally hidden because it's right buried in beside the, the fabric. The next one, just to keep the strap more in place, this one is going to show, so I want to make sure it's nice and neat. And that's fine, right? That doesn't look bad at all. I'll put a little zigzag across the top of the lingerie elastic on the back so that it cannot flop down. If you're working by yourself and you don't have somebody to help you adjust the straps, then start by attaching them to the back first and then just try the camisole on and then you'll be able to easily adjust the pins on the front. Awesome, so that's securely attached to the back and then I'm going to make sure the strap is not twisted and I'll bring it up and then I'll just tuck it into the peak. I want to just try it on and make that adjustment while I've got it on. And so I just tried it on and I'm cutting off quite a bit, probably at least six, seven inches off both straps and then I just compare the two straps together to make sure they were about the same and I want to have the strap coming up kind of in between where the two different elastics meet just so it doesn't look like a raggedy edge there at the corner I want to have a nice neat corner I'm going to use that same 2.5 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter zigzag I'm, I think I'm just going to make like a triangle shape around the lace there because that'll hide the zigzag and it will secure the strap nicely. I definitely want to catch the very top edge of the lace, otherwise it'll be unsupported and the lace will kind of flop down. Can you see a little bit on the back here where I zigzagged in a triangular shape, long skinny triangle, and I'm gonna cut off the strap that comes below that. So everything is nice and neat and it's secure trim off any little threads do the same thing to the other side and then I'm done okay isn't that lovely it just turned out so pretty I just love it <laughs>